Uh oh. Here we go again. <laughs> One of those matches where right after it's over, we head to the linen closet, grab a towel to soak up all of the sweat. The tryhard pants are on for this one, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Well, today's game was one where blue team left me with nothing else to do but get sweaty. Sometimes being a tryhard isn't enough though, you need a good blend of red team potatoes and there was some of that <laughs> that we'll showcase later. Uh, Sharnhorst has been in the game for a while. She brings a pretty unique and fun gameplay style into Legends. Some people who have struggled with her, I kind of explain her as a big cruiser. Not a typical battleship that you want to tank a lot of damage, but we'll talk more about her play style later. As far as premiums go, if you get her gameplay style down, she could be one of the most fun and best tier 6 premium battleships. Before we go any farther, our setup aiming systems, steering gears, and target acquisition. I'll give you two commander setups, the first one paid, the second one free. The one that we are using and the paid one is Azerlane Sharnhorst, and we have Cunningham and Jajard on here. The free setup, you would probably want to use Ciliax, and you could, again, use Cunningham to help with the dispersion a little bit. De Ravel, Jajard, um... You know, inspirations like that. Jard could help these small AP shells and their penetration a little bit, and then D Ravel for the um, reload. You don't necessarily have to run Brawler, but I usually do on this ship just because the dispersion is not great. So I don't want to be uh, shooting from longer ranges. I want to be in close. So the extra range, you know, I don't really need it. Plus Brawler, and if you're using D Ravel, they kind of bring the reload down so you can take a quantity over quality approach because the accuracy will troll you so we are on trap domination and what in the world am i doing i'm sailing right into b cap <laughs> yes yes well hear me out on a couple points here one is a concept that i like to do with hipper york prince wigan mines and other torpedo cruisers and that is to get kind of into a forward position protected by islands and dare anyone to come try and root you out. If done correctly, you can be a real pain in red team's keister. Anyone who dares to push you could face the wrath of your torpedoes, so you deny part of the map to the enemies, you can set up crossfires, capture objectives, yada yada yada. And since Sharnhorst has torpedoes, here we are. So we're going to come in here, try to get the cap, and hide behind this island and just be a general pain in the butt. The second point. It's a concept that stuck with me from one of MetaJerk's videos. He is one of my fellow North American CCs. And that is this. After playing thousands of games, you realize that players follow a rather predictable path. They do the same thing they've always done. They sail to the same spots, with the same ships, take up the same positions, and that's great and all, and it, it works okay in random battles, I'm sure. But are you really garnering more experience? Are you getting better at the game at that point? You know, are you learning new things? Or are you just kind of going through the motions? For one, I would like to continue learning new ways to be effective, new positions to go to, kind of like I've, this is the first time I've sailed Sharnhorse directly into B Cap on this map. Um, you know, sometimes it ends with you exploding in a rather spectacular fashion, but that's fine. I know in, in most cases when I get sunk, it's a good learning experience, and uh, yeah, I garner a lot of information from that. But by trying new things, you know, going to different positions, different plays, you have a bigger playbook. You know more, you see things that work and things that don't work, and it makes you a better player. This is something that is universally sought after by Gamers, uh, Call of Duty, Halo, World of Tanks, Viva Pinata. <laughs> Show me a gamer that says, no, I like sucking at that game. It's, it's fun to come home from work and just get dumped on by a 12-year-old, and I'll show you a sociopath. So, most games on Trap, they kind of progress the same way. 
Generally, the north team will sail straight ahead and overload A and B, because that's the way their ships are facing, and south team will sail straight ahead and overload B and C. Aside from the destroyer threat, of which there are two, a Gata and a Hatsuharu, I believe, I feel pretty confident going in here into B and just trying to do what I'm doing here and shoot these ships that are overloading C. Now the Gata. I mentioned some potato action and I do not want to pick on this player, but this torp launch by him was really unfortunate. He had me dead to rights. And uh, for my part of this, I should have already switched to HE. I didn't. I kept AP loaded, so I should have switched. But with his torpedoes gone, I really have all the time in the world to kill this guy. So Sharnhorst, she is pretty good in a brawl. If you can take your opponents on, maybe one at a time or two at a time, she doesn't really stand up to being focused. For starters, her HP pool, 56k. Only the Strasbourg, the Francesco, and the Lyon have smaller HP pools. Her armor's okay, it just might not be as robust as uh, you're used to with Tirpitz or Bismarck. Uh, she does have turtleback armor, which helps against the citadels. Still, a 25mm bow, though, means 380mm guns can punch through. She does have an icebreaker, but if someone knows where to shoot, they can punch right through the front of the ship. Very large German superstructure, of course, that can be farmed. Uh, the turret armor is just okay. The turrets will get knocked offline pretty easily. And the tour production, 22%, is very German. Not that great. Keep in mind as well, her torpedo armament, in typical German fashion, sits out on the deck, so getting focused by HE or taking lots of damage, there's a good chance that your torp launchers could get knocked out. Heels are on the low side of things at about 8500. The guns, 11 inch guns or 283 millimeters, which is quite small. They can only overmatch 19 millimeters of armor, but they do reload very fast, and the turret traverse is super quick. HE Alpha kind of sucks, 3200, and the fire chance is the smallest of the tier 6 battleships, I believe, that I saw, at just 20%. Even saying that, you should not be afraid to shoot HE in Sharnhorst, especially against battleships who are bow tanking you or well angled. The AP shells are just too small to really be effective, so nothing wrong with shooting a little high explosive. The HE DPM is about the worst at tier 6, but the AP DPM is okay. The fast reload helps with this. Her AA rating is decent at 66. I could say, you know, it could be worse. Nelson's is 49, Strasbourg 51. So yeah, decent, but usually I do keep a catapult fighter. Since carriers have been uh, pretty frequent here lately, I've been putting the catapult fighter on a lot of my battleships just as a little bit of a uh, deterrent. So her speed, she is very fast, can cruise around 30 knots. Turning circle is 800 meters. It's just okay. It's not that great, and we run into some issues here playing in these tight quarters. But her rudder shift is really great at 11.6 seconds. Overall, she's pretty maneuverable and kind of zippy, fun to play. Concealment, 14 kilometers, that's pretty average. So remember at the start of this video, I showed that I was in a 1v4 situation. Me versus four reds. A Dallas, a Hatsuharu, a New York, and a Talon. So looking at the scoreboard now, that means all of my current teammates are going to die without killing any more reds. Now, spoiler alert, I do win, giving me my 12th solo warrior in over oh, 4,600 games. <laughs> so yeah, it's a pretty rare medal to get. Um, currently, though, we are turning back around. We are going to come over here and try to head off the Dallas and the Hatsu to keep our teammates alive. Now, typically, Sharnhorst is a fantastic cruiser killer. The guns are the right caliber so that they can citadel cruisers without overpinning the armor. Like mentioned though, it's just a gamble on what the dispersion roll is going to give you. This Dallas, for instance, I mean, this guy should have been dead several times over now. 
And there I go bragging about uh, not getting overpins, and we get two. But I think this shot ends up being a little bit better again, though. This is five, five, six kilometers with nine guns, and we get one penetration. That actually does damage. So the guns definitely will troll you. Just prepare yourself for that. The, uh, at longer ranges, though, <laughs> it's even worse. So typically, that's why I would say I would like to get her in pretty close or to medium ranges. Now, the secondaries were going off a little bit there. So the Hatsuhara came around. And uh, Sharn Horse has a pretty good secondary armament with 12 150mm guns and 14 105mm guns. When carriers kind of die back down and the hype over the Soviet carriers is over, I would typically use the secondary gunnery consumable. And if we had had that on earlier, it would have helped us melt that Gata. Without it, the secondaries to me feel very unreliable and erratic. And um, I say that even though this game we end up with two close quarters experts. But still, if you go back and watch that little footage of the Gata, and here, very shortly, the Hatsuhara is going to get close, and the guns just feel very wonky. I haven't really tested a secondary build, but with Porcupine, Von Hipper, Haruna, and a secondary battery module, you could get the range over 8 kilometers. Personally, I just love the main battery. I love these guns. They're very unique, and I would rather pump up their accuracy a little bit. Yeah, you see the accuracy now. Imagine it without <laughs> a level 16 to uh, Scharnhorst and a 16 to Cunningham. Scary. So the Hatsaharo. He is definitely coming around here, and I'm desperately trying to get off of the island. That 800 meter turning circle is uh, causing some issues here. I know he's going to come around the corner. Now this time, the Gata kind of got away with it because... I shot the Torp short. I thought he was going to turn in. This time, I'm going to launch him out in front of him. And, of course, he turns in. <laughs> but that's okay. We did a widespread. It's, it's a good kind of distraction factor, even if you're not going to hit them. It makes them kind of maneuver. And in that case, with him back here, I'll have a much easier time of dodging his torpedoes. We go ahead and launch the torpedoes off the other side of the ship. and connect and again kind of the way that he came around behind me it made it pretty easy for me to dodge his yolo rush so it is me versus the dallas new york and Allen. we have the points lead and the caps lead so we really all we need to do is survive i don't have to hunt and kill these guys although the dallas is pretty much on life support if i could just get him to pop back out, <laughs> that would be great. One thing is absolutely for sure, though, and that is that the New York has got to go. And then I can flip this cap and pretty much seal this game's fate. The last little tidbit of information I wanted to point out about Scharnhorst are the torpedoes. Lots of players in these German battleships with torpedoes, the Nisenau, Sharni, Turpets, and others, they just feel like they have to get in close and use the torpedoes, and that's their only goal in life. And that's a surefire way to get sunk. Running headlong into a brawl, especially early in the match, is, is a good way to lose. I would think just, or I would say, I would suggest, play your normal battleship role. You know, focus on staying alive and things like that. And then if you get in a situation where you need the torpedoes, then there you go. Overall, Charnhorst is a very, very fun ship to play when you get the hang of her. So the Dallas did poke back out and we sent six shells his way <laughs> and he lived. So that would probably be my last opportunity to get any more kills and to get the Kraken. I know the Talon is down out here in the open water somewhere, so I'm probably not going to get the chance to sink him. With his armor uh, being a heavy cruiser, Sharnhorst struggles against angled heavy cruisers as well, so I wouldn't get a devastating shot to take him out of the match. But regardless, 
We got the solo warrior because there's no way these guys can kill me now. We'll wait to see the scoreboard at the end, but I believe it was about 3200 base XP, which is pretty good for a battleship. Not the most damage, but overall a very, very fun match. I really enjoy this ship. If you guys could do me a huge favor, smash the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, let me know what you guys think of Sharon Horse down below. Do you think she's a little power crept or still as good as ever? And with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.